to another exciting edition of Minor Obsession. Special, we'll call it the College Cup edition of Minor Obsession this week. We're joined by a really special guest, our head coach for the, I guess, number 14th ranked Charlotte 49ers. Until the NCAA updates their website, I think I'm going to keep calling you the number 12th ranked Charlotte 49ers because that's uh, better in my books. But uh, really excited to have Coach Kevin Langan with us today. Coach, how you doing? How you feeling today? Yeah, doing great. We just uh, finished practice about 20 minutes ago. So uh, looking forward to, to the chat and have some fun. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, speaking of practice and uh, this season, I think where we got to go to first before we get into the tournament you're about to undertake is, you know, this has obviously been an unusual year. You're playing in the spring. We're talking to you uh, at the end of April instead of normally November time frame at the end of the season. How uh, have you managed through this season, including, you know, the impact of COVID and, and the cancellation of games you've managed through the whole whole season here? And what's the what's the team response look like on that? It's been a great response, but how long do you have? Um, it felt like this started. <laughs> um, we played one spring game back in 2020 against Furman. We were getting ready for our second spring game and obviously lockdown came in and then we weren't sure what we were doing. The season got pushed to the spring, so we trained very hard all through the fall. The players, the student athletes were incredible, how committed they were, uh, training and not without a game coming up. And then we get to come back in the spring um, and start playing our games in the winter. And now obviously we're getting through the games and, and now looking for the to crown a national champion in May. So it's been a very unique season, a very challenging one with all the protocols in place, all the testing. We unfortunately had a few uh, incidents in the programme that shut us down three times, but, but we kept going. Our, our motto through the year was to, was to adapt and overcome. We, we knew it was going to be this way, talking to Coach Healy and Coach Sanchez from the fall, how, how impacted their sports were. It was just inevitable with our players on campus in the dorms that at some stage through the season, we were going to have players missing games, players contact tracing. And we spoke to everyone in the programme, all 28 players saying, look, you're going to get a chance. Every one of us has to be ready. In a traditional season, maybe you go 14, 15 deep for players who really contribute. This year, I think everyone, I think 26 players, maybe 25 players have all contributed and played for us this year, which speaks volumes for the squad. So, yeah, it's been a very unique and challenging year, but we're still fighting. We're still, we're still standing here and we're really excited for Sunday. So what do you think this season does for next season squad with that kind of short turnaround of, okay, you're going to play and then boom, right back in, into the, the fall. Yes. It, we went from the worst year in college soccer, obviously 2020, that I think most sports could say that to what we're, what we're you know, le- labeling the best year in college soccer. So we get to play, competitively through the spring and into the fall. So it, it's interesting. We've got quite a few seniors this year who decided to stay with us, which we're really, really happy about. They could have left us at, um, at Christmas when they graduated. They decided to maybe slow down their degrees. So they just have one class to take. So we have quite a few seniors who this is their last go at it. So, so our focus 100% is on giving them as many games as possible and really giving them a great send off and, and seeing how far we can go on a run. But you're absolutely right. It's a small turnaround for the fall. So so majority of the players will be back. Some players who didn't play as much but got experience and got to play will be primed and ready for the fall. So, yes, for, for I think it'll be really refreshing. Normally, we don't see the players from May all the way through and we haven't played a competitive game from April, but it's going to be a quick turnaround. It's going to be fantastic. You know, another interesting take on this season, too, no Conference USA tournament to end the season. Ended up, uh, I, I think it was pre-scheduled, so I don't think it was a change for the Marshall final game there, but ended up being a super important game where the top two teams played for the last uh, game of the season and, and the victor came out as the conference champion. Um, very unique for this year. How did you did that adjust your approach to the season as a whole or, or to the postseason? It did because we – we knew we had to be one or two in the conference to get an at-large bid to the national tournament. It would be very hard to finish third or fourth in our conference and still get an at-large bid. And our ultimate goal is to, to get to the national tournament each year, in addition to being you know, one of the top teams in conference you were saying, trying to win it. So it did, it did alter us a little bit. We could have packed the, the schedule for the midweek games, but we decided to really allow ourselves a full week before every conference game uh, for two, two reasons. One, so we could really prepare and treat every game like a cup final, the seven conference games. 
but but also just we knew there was going to be moments where we were going to be shut down or missing players, so we didn't want to have a lot of games in a short period of time and, and ask a smaller squad to have to play, play, play. But yes, we, we were a bit disappointed that the conference men's soccer coaches, I think we were the only sport where we were denied a conference championship and we couldn't quite get our heads around that because we just want our seniors especially and all our players to get a chance to play for a cup where, you know, the whistle blows and, you know, at the end of the game, there's going to be one team victorious, lifting the trophy and the other team wasn't their day. And unfortunately for us, it wasn't our day a few weeks ago, but we got that moment. We got to prepare all, you know, three or four days for that game where the winner got to lift the trophy. So that worked out well in the circumstances, but not the result we wanted. Um, but yes, it, it did alter our approach a little bit, very much. And it, it was an odd decision. As you mentioned, women's soccer had a conference tournament. I think some of the other conferences had tournaments for the men's soccer. So did they give you any inclination as to what the decision was there? Yeah, in fairness to them, it's been such a fluid and, and situation with COVID. This decision was made back in May where we weren't quite sure what our full season was going to be. So the rationale was that we have such a really strong men's soccer conference. It's, it's, I think it's by far the strongest sport in Conference USA. So the, the rationale was that we can leave the teams to use that money to maybe go and schedule up to get strong RPI games. So then having that large and perhaps that would give us more chance to getting teams in. But as the situation changed and as the season moved from the fall to the spring and as our season got shortened and as the tournament field got shortened, as coaches, we were all waiting for the, the conference to say, OK, yeah, you can have a four team tournament, a six team tournament like all the other sports, but they never did. And we couldn't get them to change that. So yeah, we were a bit frustrated. Um, we, ourselves and Marshall, obviously, we were, you know, they were 5 0 and 1. We were 6 0 0 going into that game. So we we both had something to go along the line. But I know there were a few teams that, after the third round of games, basically had nothing to play for, which was tough for them. Yeah. So diving into the season, we started off a little slow and then we played Kentucky and then just couldn't lose pretty much after that. Can you talk about kind of that turning point and what, what happened in that Kentucky game? Yeah, f firstly, we, we were performing very well in those games. We, we Probably the craziest coaching decision of my career, we, we went 440 days without playing a competitive game and I decided we lost a load of exhibition games and then I decided to take the team on the road to an ACC opponent in our first competitive game, which was, a, which was probably a big risk, you know, but we did fantastic. We really competed very, very well um, and got away. That was a 0-0 tie. And then we went into the two home games and we played very, very well. We performed very well. There was a couple of mental breakdowns in front of our own goal, some really cheap goals we gave up. But we, were, we hadn't won a game in our first three, which is unlike us. So we, um, we had to regroup a little bit. And I think, in fairness to the guys, it was just that lack of competitive games. I wasn't sure how it was going to manifest itself in us. Was it conditioning or tactics or just a bit rusty and it was none of those it was more just that mental uh, concentration to just stay in the, and make good decisions especially defensively for 90 minutes play after play which is very hard to re recreate in training to replicate in training so but yeah Kentucky it's very over a season I don't like to put this was a pivotal moment this was a you know a eureka moment for us but pretty much was you know we were on the road at Kentucky um, they scored a great goal after nine minutes. It seemed like every little mistake we made, the other team punished us and scored. And we had a, a gut moment then as a programme. It was, OK, are we going to think this season is not going to go away? Are we going to feel sorry for ourselves? But, but we didn't. The players were incredible. We dug deep. We got a goal back before half time. At the time, Kentucky were ranked seventh. They, they were playing very well undefeated in, in a lot of games. Um, and then as the game went on, I just saw us grow get stronger, get more collective, get together. And as it went into overtime, we really bossed the game and got the winning goal. And I think for everybody, we just just had a big sigh, a big let out of relief. You know, it's like, OK, we're, we're, we're as good as we thought we were. We've just got on the road and beat a top 10 team. Now it's time to get to work. And, and from that moment on, we, we really, really got going. We didn't concede a goal in five games. We really, despite all the off-field troubles with injuries and, and COVID and shutdowns, we just kept, we didn't miss a beat. We just kept performing, which was great. So, you know, dominance has kind of come to be expected of, of this team. We're in what I'd like to call a renaissance period for <laughs> men's soccer. And you've been around to see all of it dating back to, you know, the early 2000s area. And, um, you know, we've made the tournament all except one time since our magical run to runner up in, in 2011. Um, you know, how have you seen that uh, performance over the time you've been here continue to grow? And then most importantly, I'm kind of curious, 
you we now have a new AD at the helm and um, you've been big man on campus for quite some time and, and now all our other athletic programs are starting to gear up too. How exciting is it to be, you know, a member of this broader 49ers athletic department right now? It's, it's fantastic. Um, it's, I think just winning breeds winning. I know that's the feeling around the department. I think when, uh, you know, you're on the staff call and you, you know, the round of applause for a team going up and beat, you know, baseball beat Chapel Hill this week. So it's pretty exciting. And now it's on us to go and beat them on Sunday. And so that winning and that good feel factor really helps the department. I know since, uh, you know, Mike Hill's been here, he's been very big on what do you need to be successful? Now go and do it. He really wants every sport here to be at the top of Conference USA, competing for championships, competing to get into the national tournament. So it, we, we've been very fortunate to have done that for the last, you know, over a decade now. Uh, and, and for our story, I think at the beginning it was, you know, Coach Gunn got here and brought me on board and it was very clear our mission was to, to get Charlotte from 150 up to, you know, top 25 and ranked. And that kind of manifested itself in, in a magical run where we played some great soccer. We had a really good team, a good tight team, and we got lucky along the way we were on PK shootouts and all of a sudden we're in, the, we're in the national final. And from that moment on, the expectations around the programme have grown. Um, the calibre of recruits we can bring in is growing and just the whole culture around the programme is just, we expect to be top 25, top 20 every year. We expect to be competing for conference championships every year and we expect to be, you know, one of the 48 teams or 36 teams announced, you know, every year. That, that's what we plan for. That's what, why we get up in the morning. That's what drives us. And the big challenge for us as a programme is to break through that 32. We, We've got close a few times and we just hasn't gone our way and we've let ourselves down a few times, but the program is primed to break through to get to that sweet 16 and see how far we can go. And that's what we're really hoping for on Sunday. But, and you can go into soccer here. I think when we first started out on the run 10 years ago, it was our style of play was very much protect and break. And now we've had to evolve our style and we're the aggressor in most games now with the ball and with the attack. So we've had to evolve our style, evolve the players we recruit and just keep moving to stay ahead a little bit. So you've been with Charlotte long enough to know how much we hate Chapel Hill. And you have experience with that, you know, losing the national championship, which I still I blame it on the refs. And then 2014, they knocked us out in the first round at home. So are you using that as motivation for yourself? Are you playing old tapes to the team? Uh, we really want you to beat Chapel Hill. Like out of everything... <laughs> Like you know, we won the national championship, but beating Chapel Hill is probably above that to some extent. That's for the fans. You know, we're in the trenches here, so we don't use. I don't ever use revenge as a as a motivational tool. You know, trying to think they'll be like they'll be nine years of age in 2011. Some of our boys now, or even seven, some of them. You know, so they know the final and they know uh, the result. But yeah, I don't really use revenge to get them going. That's more for the fans to go there. And it's totally different teams. Um, I'll be honest with you, in 2014, one of the proudest performances I've ever had of a team. We absolutely dominated them, and 2011 as well, both games, and we come out on the wrong side of the score. So we'll be hoping for a similar performance, but a different outcome on Sunday. But yeah, I'm not into the, we owe them one, they're our rivals. Be honest, we just want to win every single game. And the way I like to explain, we've won a lot of games here. We win more than we lose. And if that's your only motivation, then you run out of motivation. When you beat a team five games in a row, what do you use to motivate next time? It's just about us bringing our A game, us taking control of what we can, and us just you know being the best we can on the day. So, so you're not in the reven revenge games, and I'm sure you've got the team focused just on Sunday, but we kind of have a storybook uh, set up here in the playoffs. Um, you know, if we handle business on Sunday, there's a possibility we meet our old coach and Jeremy Gunn. Have you started texting him, razzing him a little bit, telling him we're coming yeah, for him? When we finish here, I'm going to shower up. He flies into Charlotte about seven o'clock and we're going to go and have a bite to eat somewhere tonight to catch up. I haven't seen him, obviously, for COVID for, for a few years now. So we, we chat three, four times a week. He's still a very close friend, a mentor of mine. So, yeah, we'll have some fun tonight. But... 100%, I sound like a boring coach with grey hair, but I've not even looked at them yet, to be honest. <laughs> for, the last, for the last 10 years, the last nine years, we, we've not got past the second round, so I'd be foolish to start thinking about that game. Chapel Hill are a, a top 10 team, very, very strong opponent. Possibly could have, should have maybe won the ACC. It shows you the calibre they have this year, so we are 100% focused on them, yeah. But it'll be, nice probably to, wise. it'll be nice to catch up with Coach Gunn later on, and he can certainly buy dinner. 
the money he's on out of state. So, you know. <laughs> well, and this is exactly why Scott and I aren't coaches because uh, we would be circling that game and I would be texting them and telling them how we were going to stomp them later. Uh, right. So that's good we're not at the helm. Yeah, no, not yet. Maybe if we get through on Monday, I can start having some fun, but fun at his expense. <laughs> We know, so each other, curi- we know each other's teams really well just because of professional curiosity. I just see how his team are doing. I watch the Pac-12 network. I know we'll catch up in the week and he'll chat about the game and vice versa. So out of any team other than Conference USA opponents, I probably know Stanford better than anyone. So, so curious your thoughts too. We like to ask our coaches this. Um, obviously went through a big change for the brand for the Charlotte 49ers last year. Um, And, you know, men's soccer was a big reason our Nike contract changed after the national championship run and and got us a little better gear back then. Uh, What are your thoughts on on the new brand? And and obviously the striped soccer jerseys are by far the best uniform we've ever come out with. So it's good to see those are still around. But uh, what are your thoughts on the brand as a whole? I really like it. I really like the CLT. Um, Just links us links us to the city, which is really important, I think, for our, for our university as we keep progressing. I, I love the, you know, the, the C with the pick, but I really like the CLT. Um, I think, you know, if we could pick up our campus and move it nine miles south right into to downtown or uptown, I think it would be, you know, one of the, if not the best university in the country. Um, but we're nine miles north and we're still one of the best com- universities, in my opinion. But I, I love the new brand. Um, I think it's also exciting, like you were saying earlier, with the, a lot of the sports, there's a lot of new hires in the head coaching positions. There seems to be kind of a new excitement, a dynamicness to the, you know, the athletic department at the moment. And I think it just ties in with the new logo, the new brand, kind of like a new future, uh, new expectations for us all in the future. I, I'm okay with saying we want to win championships. I'm okay with saying that we should, every single sport should be doing it. I'm okay with that pressure. I think that's healthy. I think that's a reason why you get up in the morning. It's why we do what we do it makes you push that extra 10%. So for us to come out and say, look, here's our brand new logo. Here's our brand new expectations. This is what we want for the future. I'm, I'm very, very happy with it. Do you guys like the new logo? Oh, love it. I enjoy it. I like the old logo too, though. <laughs> I'm one of the few. <laughs> I think it takes a while for some of the alum to get on board because they, alums, because they look at that logo and they're like, "This doesn't mean anything to me." But I, I think everyone's starting to really come on board at down the months. I think when you see it compared to some of the big time schools, uh, the Power Five conference, it just stands out and matches similar branding to what they have. It, I, I, honestly, I can find our logo a lot easier on a page with a hundred logos now, which I, I appreciate. So. For me, all in. Completely agree, 100%. And and the timing was um, well for our brand launch, too, because, you know, the Charlotte FC just launched all their branding just after us and had a lot of CLT ties, too. So I'm sure you're very excited for them to be in town. And obviously, um, shout out to Bronny for for being on that team when it turns around. So, yes. Yeah, very. We can't wait, to be honest. Even just, I got two young boys. I just can't wait to just get on the light rail, take them uptown and watch a MLS game. I think it's just going to be a, it's something you grow up in England that you get that experience. You know, you go to the game with your dad and your uncle and you have this kind of tribal ritual. I just can't wait to take my kids over there to watch it as well. You know, just a personal one, but also just to have a top soccer team in town. And we have close ties to them. Mark Nichols is the technical director. Uh, He's a good friend and we, we speak regular. And then Brian Edwards, our goalkeeper coach, is also the academy goalkeeper coach for for the Charlotte FC. So we have some really strong links with them. So yeah, we're excited. I wish it was that it was supposed to be playing now, but obviously they pushed it back 12 months with the pandemic. So I know it's a little early to say, but do you see any kind of similar partnerships like baseball has with the Knights where you guys play in the stadium or play? We, yes, we'd love to. We we um I'm interested to see where it goes. Because Conference USA is, we're positioning ourselves really, really well. Like, you know, Coastal Carolina are joining the league. That There's another potential, very, very good program joining us to make us a 10-team uh, league in two years, if not this fall, then the fall after, which quite frankly would position us third, I think, in the country in terms of strength. So I'm not, I'm, so the reason I'm saying I'm not sure will that change, but it's been, it's been quite hard for us to schedule some of the, the power conferences because they don't want to play us because we're a good team. <laughs> And they'd rather just play each other and then get what we call cupcakes on the side to keep their record well. So I'm curious with our conference now, I think, going to jump a few of those 
Um, and I think that's a real, real possibility, whether that will change the scheduling for us. But one of the opportunities is to say, hey, come and play us. We'll play on a neutral field. We'll play in a beautiful stadium. And that, that'll be another way to entice some of the programmes we want to our home city, which would be great. That would be a dream. Well, we've kept you long enough. Obviously, you have a, a trip to take over to Cary, North Carolina with the rest of the team. Uh, I think you're leaving on Friday and then obviously the game Sunday at, what is it, 2 o'clock? Is that right? Oh, five o'clock. Five o'clock. All right. So five o'clock Sunday uh, against Chapel Hill, as we mentioned. Uh, so that's going to be uh, a great repeat of, of uh, memories that a lot of fans have in their minds. Hopefully we can uh, change the outcome this time. <laughs> Well, hopefully we'll be you rooting for you, sir. Right? We beat Chapel Hill twice in a week. That I mean, the fans can't ask for much more than that. It'd be pretty cool. Oh, uh, you throw in, throw in the softball win, too. It's like three times in maybe 13, 14 days. So. You put the pressure on us, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we believe in you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks again. We really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll be talking to you again at the end of the season with, with the championship. Thank you so much. That's the plan. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Have a great trip. Thank you.